So I'm reading from the Medical Apartheid book, The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans or so-called African Americans. Because we know that blacks are not associated to one continent, but we're all over the earth. So most people have seen the movie I Am Legend. It came out in 2007 with uh, Will Smith. He plays uh, Dr. Robert Nedville, a virology um, doctor who studies viruses. But he's also immune to the virus. You know, his own blood. His blood is pure. And I thought it was quite interesting because there was a story about this man named John uh, Hollis. If I'm pronouncing his last name right, he's immune to COVID-19. So I'm reading this article from NBC News. He unknowingly had COVID-19. Now his blood contains rare antibodies. The truth is I could come up with no real answers other than perhaps God has a plan for me, said John Hollis. Or maybe I'm just lucky as hell. With his roommate in dire health from coronavirus last spring, it did not take much for John Hollis to believe he would also contract a highly infectious deadly disease. He was so concerned about what could happen that he penned a letter to his teenage son, Davis, in case things went downhill fast, Hollis said. It turned out that Hollis unknowingly already had COVID-19 and may have unwittingly infected his roommate. Hollis, the communications manager at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, learned in July that he fell into a rare category of people whose blood could help scientists understand COVID-19 and potentially treat those who fall ill. COVID-19, it seems, cannot harm him, said Dr. Lance Leota, a George Mason University pathologist and bioengineer who is leading the school's clinical trials on antibodies. Um, Hollis, 54, a former journalist, learned that his blood is fortified with so-called super antibodies, antibodies that neutralize the virus, which even when diluted 10,000 times still resists COVID-19, Leota said. So this man has, um, so-called black man, has the super antibodies in him, which is a God-given, you know, ability to fight infectious diseases. So why would he choose, or why would anybody choose in that sense to put machine in their blood or in their bodies to uh, fight the COVID-19 when he already has it? Now, there's some people who don't have these uh, antibodies. So who knows how many people have this uh, super antibodies in them or can fight the infectious disease. You know, I believe the number is well over 5%. A lot of us ain't getting tested. But I need you, the American people, I need you. I need every American to do their part. And that's not hyperbole. I need you. I need you to get vaccinated when it's your turn and when you can find an opportunity. And to help your family, your friends, your neighbors get vaccinated as well. Through John and others, we have been propelled into exciting new science, Leota said. Learning about his antibodies offers us new ways to fight COVID. And I hope the man is greatly compensated because the history of them experimenting on so-called black people is not good. It's well documented, way beyond the Tuskegee trials. There's so much wickedness they have done to people of color. Yes, they deserve to die. I hope they burn in hell. In short, using Hollis antibodies, the Y-shaped proteins in the blood used by the immune system to identify and fight bacteria and viruses, Leota and his team will, as part of their trials, understand exponentially better how to kill the coronavirus and mass produce antibodies like John's for the general population to protect it from the virus, like the drug Regeneron, if I'm pronouncing that right, which President Donald Trump took after he announced in early October that he had tested positive. If that sounds crazy to you, imagine how it feels to me, said Hollis, a former sports journalist for the Atlanta Journal Constitution. More than 20 million people in the United States have contracted the deadly virus as vaccines slowly become available. But treatment for the virus is still necessary, which makes Hollis super antibodies uh, inestimably important. His story began after he took his son Davis on a trip to Europe in early March. And we know Europe was named after a so-called black woman, Europa, 
So we can't call them Europeans, but we can call them Caucasians. Uh, not long after they returned from London and Paris and just before the flights into the United States were grounded, Hollis experienced congestion, which he associated with normal sinus issues that came with that time of the year for him. Symptoms passed quickly, but his roommate, who did not want to be named, became devastatingly ill with COVID-19 for a month. Fearing for his friend, Hollis stood by his door early in the morning and listened for movement to ensure that he was still alive. Hollis consistently wiped down the townhouse they shared and confined himself to his bedroom. He was scared to death, said Hollis, closest friend, Kevin W. Tidings, a lawyer in Charlotte, North Carolina. And the state of uh, Charlotte is named after Sophia Charlotte, which was so-called um, black woman or mulatto. I called him just about every day for two weeks checking on him. I was worried for him. He figured he would regret it. But to his credit, he manned up and stayed there because he didn't want to go out and give it to someone else. He was especially worried about his son. Hollis said he was petrified that Davis may have contracted COVID-19 on the trip. He was also scared that he could die from the virus and miss seeing his son grow into a man. I was at a strange peace with whatever happened to me, but saddened by the prospect of perhaps not living to see my son hit those major life milestones, such as graduating from high school, college, and getting married and becoming a father himself, Hollis said. April 8th, I sat down and wrote a letter to my son for him to have if I wasn't there. I wrote the first sentence and cried. I read it every month and I cried right away. I'm just grateful I didn't have to give it to him. But Hollis did not fall noticeably ill. In mid-July, he volunteered to participate in a coronavirus study on campus. And enthusiastically, backed by New George Mason University President Gregory Washington, and led by Loetta, a former deputy director of the uh, National Institution of Health. Soon after, Leota called Hollis one night to tell him that he harbored super antibodies. Hollis said he remembered feeling utter shock. It's working. Level. It's working. Here I was, scared for my roommate and fearful that I would contract COVID, he said. Instead, I had it already and likely gave it to him. He got a bad deal. I feel so badly for him and I can't get it. I'm impervious to it. My antibodies can help modern science. It was a lot to process. He is in excellent health, Hollis said. Since August, Hollis has given blood and saliva samples about every two weeks for lab testing and experiments. Hope he's getting paid. Leota said that the levels of Hollis antibodies not only have sustained, but they have also proven effective in killing six different strands of the coronavirus. Leota's team found seven other people with super antibodies for the clinical trials. Hollis is different from the others in that his antibodies have maintained at least 90% of their strength nine months after he had the coronavirus. Most slim, excuse me, most similar antibodies uh, dissipate in 60 to 90 days, Leota said. Furthermore, Leota said Hollis super antibodies will help the next phase of the clinical trials, testing it in those who have taken the vaccine to make sure that their antibodies have been elevated through the injection. It's all very exciting, he said, and it's all because of our patients like John. Other public health officials are excited too, like Dr. Pierre Vigilance, a adjunct professor of health policy and management at George Washington University's School of Public Health, who is the founder and principal at Health Up Stratic Advisors. Vigilance, who led the local emergency response efforts to the H1N1 outbreak in Washington, D.C. area in 2009, said he understands Loretta's excitement. 
So once again, we have a medical apartheid, dark history of medical experimentation on black Americans from colonial times to the present. All right. I'm just going to read a few of these. Uh, let me see. Hold on one second. In 1966, Solomon McBridge examines an incarcerated subject wearing uh, skin patches uh, impregnated with various experimental pharmaceuticals in H block of the Holmesburg prison complex. So you see, you got the uh, black doctor and then you got your um, test subject right there. Kind of like in the movie, a uh, Manchurian candidate as well, when they put all these patches on them, but that's what they do in this prison system. I mean, the prison system is nothing but modern day slavery. I mean, I think a lot of people know that by now. And then right here we have, uh, until the early 1970s, physicians and researchers supervised experimentations with scores of inmates, most of whom were black, at sites such as the Holmesburg Prison Complex in Philadelphia. Some inmates, such as those pictured seated here, worked as technicians despite their uh, scant education and lack of training. Okay. The fact that so few people make these kinds of antibodies means that it's important to learn how to harvest and how to replicate that. And we know that the antibodies or the super antibodies comes from so-called black man. So what does that tell you? Um, Hollis remains astounded by the discovery. I mean, the so-called blacks or the black people in general or the original inhabitants of the earth all four corners of the earth, from Europe, Africa, America, the Palo, all those Negro um, tribes already here in the Americas, the Black Europeans, nobility, the uh, West African Judeans, and whatnot. Okay, all over the earth, not just one continent. But um, but he still wears a mask and practices social distancing because he's a real nice guy. The gravity of the situation has also weighed on him for months. I bet. To say this whole surreal experience has been tough to digest is an understatement, he said. Dr. Loetta and his team are amazing. On one hand, I am eternally grateful and feel blessed beyond measure to still be healthy and somehow have this rare natural protection against a deadly virus that is now killing more than 3,000 Americans a day and adversely affecting everybody, but especially African-Americans and others of color. And it's not killing African-Americans more, it's killing more um, so-called white people. And that's from the CDC charts. Um, but I'm not gonna get into that. But on the other hand, you need only to turn on the TV, the propaganda, in my opinion, or glance at any newspaper to see the large swath of death and misery from all around the globe as a result of the virus. It makes me ask, why me? Why have I been spared when so many others aren't? Well, if you look at history, history is pretty dark. Um, even, I'm not going to even say slavery, but just, like I said, the experimentations on so-called blacks, you know, different races as well, but I'm just focusing on my people, but um, a lot of uh, innocent blood has been shed, um, just like the plagues in uh, Egypt. He said he has stayed up late nights since July pondering his experiments. The truth is I could come up with no real answers other than perhaps God has a plan for me, he said, or maybe I'm just lucky as hell. Either way, I do know that I've long preached to my son that we all share responsibility to make the world a better place than it was when we arrived. Never in a million years could I have envisioned this being how I might help to do just that. Um, then we have this uh, asshole right here. Uh, Dr. Albert uh, Klingman earned fame and millions of dollars by conducting medical research using prisoner subjects at the Holmesburg prison complex until the 1970s, despite the complaints of research subjects that they were deceived and injured, he has never faced criminal charges or professional uh, censure. Instead, he has been um, 
laud for elevating or evading the uh, specialty of uh, dermatology. And here he is, this clown. Um, let me see. Uh, Elmarine uh, Whitfield Bell, daughter of radiation subject Elmer Allen, um, confronts her mother, Miss uh, Fredina Allen, at their home in Italy, Texas. Mrs. Allen holds a photograph of her deceased husband, who's one of at least 18 Americans, um, surreptitiously, if I'm pronouncing it right, injected with pl plutonium by government scientists. Okay. Um, in June 1996, U.S. Secretary of Energy Hazel O. Larry spoke to the journalist outside the Rocky Flats Environmental Technology Site near Golden, uh, Colorado. Uh, Secretary O'Leary ushered in a new era of openness by declassifying records of radiation experiment, experimentation on unsuspecting American citizens, many whom were black. Okay. And, 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 and that uh, Biden, you know, he says, we all need to unify. I need you to get vaccinated when it's your turn. How can you unify when your government, your people, and even our own sellouts have done erroneous acts and whatnot? And you wonder why people don't trust the so-called government or whoever is running this damn country. It's a bunch of hypocrites and a bunch of liars. And everybody's under some type of faction or corporation or got puppet strings behind them. Right here, we got uh, Rudel Christian, a medical science liaison uh, for his pharmaceutical company, uh, NitroMed, marker of the Blacks Only Heart Failure Medication. Uh, Badil uh, extols the drug virtues to members of Detroit's Trinity AME Church in March 2006. Calvin Johnson Jr. writes, smiles as he leaves a Jonesboro, Georgia, courtroom, a free man in June 1999, accompanied by his attorney, Peter uh, Newfield, a founder of the Innocence Project. Johnson spent 16 years in prison in a work camp for a brutal rape, but he was exonerated, excuse me, by DNA evidence that proved another man committed the crime. Nothing new under the sun. Still got brothers being released from prison. Uh, for crimes they did not commit. So, let's see. Um, oh, former uh, Savannah, Georgia, Savannah, Georgia legislator Dorothy uh, Pellot became a fierce advocate for Black Florida and Georgia residents whose communities were visited by a swarm of disease-carrying mosquitoes released by the CIA during the 1950s and 1960s. The CIA documents suggest that scientists in its MK Ultra project uh, experimented with such biological exposures in black communities in order to determine whether such releases would be effective against foreign enemies. So they want you to fight in their fucking army. <laughs> That's great. They want you to say we're all one and yet they treat the so-called black community, not as humans, but test subjects. And then they want you to fight in their wars. They want you to do every single civil duty that this goddamn country, you know, wants you to participate in. And yet you, you wonder why Muhammad Ali and some of these other uh, predominant um, so-called black, uh, you know, male influences, you wonder why they didn't choose to fight in the Vietnam War and many other things. Because look what this government has done to so-called people of color. But you're anti-American if you speak out against this. Or you're not American. You know, whatever. Uh, let's see. On March uh, 14, 2000, FBI agents removed a catch of illegal machine guns, thousands of rounds of ammunition, volatile explosives, and drums of poisonous chemicals from the grounds of Dr. Larry Ford's 
uh, Ivine California Home Ford, who was frankly, frankly gave racial poisoning seminars at South Africa's uh, Roplat Research Laboratory, RL, had killed himself on March 2nd as police closed in. Okay, and you wonder why uh, these people are committing suicide because they know they're wrong. These are evil people. Yes, they deserve to die. I hope they burn in hell. At least the ones that are doing this and they're helping, you know, go along with all these uh, evil, wicked acts. Okay. At Cape Town, offices of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission on June 11, 1998, vegetarian uh, Dan uh, Guzan, who headed the military run uh, Rupat Research Laboratory, describes his uh, scientific team's search for a bacterium that would harm only blacks. We were in a war situation. And a weapon is a weapon. The RRL relied upon the expertise of several U.S. scientists. Okay. You got the scumbag right here. Yes, they deserve to die. I hope they burn in hell. Oh, here's another one. Postal employees await anthrax contamination screening in the waiting area of D.C. I remember this when I was, uh, I was probably 15 years old. General Hospital, four and a half years after the 2001 deadly anthrax attacks that left five people dead, those responsible remain at large. Okay. Um, it's the same thing. Washington, D.C. Uh, postal workers and sickness of two others from anthrax uh, inhalation. Okay. In early 2004, at Michigan's Northfield Laboratories, a technician holds two intragrivious bags filled with blood substitute polyhemi against a rack of bags filled with expired blood. For years, at least 20 U.S. emergency rooms have tested various types of artificial blood without patient consent. The patient's consent. Detroit hospitals have infused uh, polyhemi at random into uh, several injured, usually unconscious ER patients who cannot give or withhold consent. Okay. Let's see. Um, any more? Well, you see. This is our lovely medical field who we trust and we give all our idolized and we give all our praise to the medical field. These people are not gods. They're not God. Okay. And yes, there are some cases. Yeah. You break your arm, you go to the hospital or, you know, you, you feeling ill in certain cases, but some of this stuff, the herbs, I ain't talking about weed. I'm talking about uh, a proper diet. Nutrition and all that stuff can help with all these uh, types of diseases that they have out here and taking care of yourself. These people are not God. All they're doing is doing these uh, experimentations on so-called blacks. And it's not being radical. It's just facts. It's history. And we're supposed to trust a government and a system that won't give you reparations because... The banks are owned by a specific group of people and they can pay themselves. You want equality, it don't exist. You want your own, you have to create an infrastructure and those hospitals, those jobs, people who look like you, yourself, you have to create those types of infrastructures. Why do you think they bombed um, uh, Black Tulsa or Black Wall Street? Take race out of it. You have blacks creating their own infrastructure, creating their own monetary system, money, that's going against the American government system. So why do you think they had their, you know, they infiltrated and had these KKK and say the little white girl and got raped by a black dude? Same typical story. They can't have that happen. Why do you think they killed Lincoln? Central banks, national banks. It's about money. 
At the end of the day, it's about money. You taking money out their pocket, you're a target. They got a cure for AIDS. They got a cure for cancer. It's all about fucking money with these people. Y'all stay deserved to die. I hope they burn.